Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Whiteboard Ministry where I talk about anything and everything related to Christianity and the Bible. In this video, I want to answer the question, do Christians have to evangelize? For some people, talking about Jesus with others can be the scariest part of being a Christian. So is there an option to believe in Jesus but not share your faith with non-Christians? We'll take a look at what Jesus said about this right away. But first, I want to say that if you know anyone who's asked this question before, share this video with them if you think it will help. And if you do find it helpful, click the like button and let me know as well. I'll also mention that this video isn't talking about how to evangelize, more about why it's important. The how is a super important topic that I think a lot of Christians miss, and I've already made a video talking about it. I'll leave a link to that video in the description, or you can click right here to watch it right now. All right, let's get started with a definition of what evangelism is. The word evangelism is translated from Greek and it essentially means to proclaim good news. Now, the word is often used in the context of Christianity, which makes total sense, but I think evangelism can totally be used in a ton of unique contexts. For example, I recently had a friend approach me wanting to lose some weight. He knew that I'm into nutrition and working out and I thought I had some things to share with him. He wanted to lose weight and I said, good news. It's totally possible for you to do that. So I proclaimed that good news to him. I evangelized to him in the context of health and nutrition. I talked about what it would look like to track his calories and what he ate and how often he could get to the gym. We don't often think of evangelism in this way, but I think the word fits. However, this video is about Christian evangelism, so let's take a look about what Jesus had to say to his followers about proclaiming his gospel. In the book of Matthew, we can read about Jesus who, after being resurrected, is teaching his disciples one last time. Jesus chooses to spend his last teaching saying this, All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Jesus was telling his disciples that it was going to be their job to go and make more disciples, more followers of Jesus. And he doesn't just ask them to stick to the nation of Israel where they were living. He says to make disciples of all nations and to teach them everything that Jesus taught. And that's a huge task. Jesus was talking to 11 guys at this point, and he said that this news needed to get to all the nations so that they could become his followers. That's like if 8 billion people today needed help losing weight, and it was me and 10 other friends' job to help them do it. It's not an easy task. Jesus still felt safe asking his 11 disciples to take it on, though. And the crazy thing is, they kind of did it. Kind of, we're not quite there yet, but today Christianity is the world's largest religion. As of 2010, it was estimated that there were 2.2 billion Christians in the world, which at the time was just less than one third of the planet's population. And it all started with Jesus making a request of 11 ordinary dudes living in the Middle East. And I want to make sure that I'm clear that Jesus really was just asking ordinary people to do this. He doesn't say, because you guys are such amazing speakers, you're going to go out and share this message or because you connect with others so well. In fact, he actually takes time to affirm that all the authority in heaven on earth has been given to him, not anyone else. Instead of telling his disciples that they're these super evangelist guys, he says that he's the one who gives them their authority, and he does this by promising he'll always be with them to the very end of age. See, Jesus didn't distinguish this task to certain people. He had 11 followers he was teaching to in that moment, and he asked all of them to go to the nations and evangelize. He didn't say, only the extroverts have to go, introverts should just stay and pray more. He didn't say, first, memorize the whole Bible and become a pastor, then you can go. He didn't say, you have to be a Christian for at least three years before you can start. And he didn't say that there was any special gift you needed to go and evangelize to all the nations. He simply said, go and do it. Maybe you found yourself using one of these reasons as an excuse not to share your faith in the past, and I hope that this makes it clear that Jesus didn't offer any of these as excuses. He said, if you are my disciple, if you follow and believe in me, then I want you to go and make other disciples and teach them to make other disciples who will then go and make more disciples. It's pretty simple when you think of it, just like every Christian should be reading their Bible regularly, 
praying regularly and attending a church regularly, so should they also be evangelizing regularly. The crazy thing is, if every Christian put this into practice, it would take no time at all before everyone in the world heard the gospel. I'll give you a simple example. If you, in this next year, take it upon yourself to share your faith with just two friends and they decide to give their lives to Jesus to become Christians, then there'd be two more disciples. And that's good stuff. But check this out. If those two friends then take a year to have conversations with two of their own friends, not all the time, but consistently about Jesus, and then those friends give their lives to Jesus, then we've gone from one disciple, you, to now seven disciples in just two years. If this trend continues and each person decides to choose two friends to share their faith with and then those friends decide to follow Jesus, it would only take 23 years to reach 8.3 billion people, which is more than the current population of the world. And that started with one person talking to two friends. Now, I get that this is a simplified example. Not everyone who hears about Jesus follows him within a year or at all for that matter. And in the real world, there would probably be people with overlapping friends. But I hope that this simple diagram shows that Jesus knew that what he was asking was actually realistic. You don't need to be a pastor of a mega church to reach a lot of people with the gospel. In fact, you can start with just two friends. So yes, I believe that every Christian has been commanded by Jesus to evangelize. Jesus believes that all the nations can be reached with his good news, and he believes that it can be accomplished by ordinary men and women like me and you. Not because we're anything special, but because he promises to be with us when we go out and try to make this goal happen. He doesn't leave room for excuses either. He commanded this of all of his followers. Now, I know that evangelism can be scary, and for some people, it puts a bad taste in your mouth. I think that the word evangelism has gotten a bad reputation over the years because Christians haven't always done it in a way that Jesus would have wanted. There are caring ways that we can share our faith with friends so that it doesn't make it feel like we're pushing religion onto them. Like I said earlier, I have a video about this already, and I highly recommend you check it out if you'd like some more insight on this whole topic of evangelism. That's it for this video though, thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if you found any of this helpful. I'd love some feedback as I'm new to making YouTube videos and want to communicate these ideas for everyone in the best way possible. If you'd like to see more of my videos, check out my channel. I come out with new content every week. If you'd like to keep seeing these videos, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified whenever I upload a new video. If you're interested, I also have an Instagram channel called Daily Dose of Truth where I post scripture daily. I'll leave a link to follow me in the description. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope that this encouraged you to go out and share Jesus with love. I'll see you next week with a new video and a new topic about Christianity and the Bible.